Yo, what's really good fam? So we haven't talked about stocks for a minute and that's what I want to do today. You're watching Sekidul and today we're talking about economic decision making during a bear market in an episode I'm calling Commitment to the Bit. Now before we continue, we just like to remind you that this channel is meant for general education purposes only and isn't meant to replace the legal or financial advice from a paid professional. When it comes to investments, it's always healthy to take everything with a fair bit of skepticism regardless of the source and that includes us. For that reason, nothing we say here should be taken as a basis for investment and you'll have to do your own work and thinking before deciding whether or not taking up a position on any stock mentioned here is in your best interest. Want to know how? Well, if you scroll down a tiny bit, hit the like and subscribe buttons, we'll do our best to help you figure out how to figure out this game for yourself. And that being said, let's get to it. Alright, so the market being pretty down generally over the past couple months, I'm not going to pretend that I haven't lost as well. I'm not a genius, I'm just a guy who invests and makes videos about investing. But given that this is the topic, it should be implied that the stocks I'm going to talk about are the ones I currently hold in my personal portfolio and should thus not be considered as an advertisement to buy the stock. These are just my thoughts on the whole thing and why I'm buying still. Additionally, also, the last video we published was on the market cycle and based on my personal interpretation of where we are in the market cycle at the moment, I feel confident continuing to invest in the market, fully aware that we may not even be at the bottom of the cycle yet. Anyways, let's get to it. The first stock that I want to talk about is one that I've mentioned a lot and one that I'm sure most investors in Korea already know about and non-investors definitely know about and that's Emart. Now this is a stock that I only have maybe, I think, right now four or five million and not that much but it's one that i'm pretty committed to buying for reasons that i'll get into first however i should probably start by saying that i do recognize that there are a significant number of issues with emart's stock from a retail investor side of things i recognize that the vice chairman of shinsegi group is notorious for his generally outspoken and controversial nature on twitter and other social media platforms though from what i understand he's reeled a bit back i don't really follow that aspect of the finance world or whatever next i also recognize that the pandemic was a big boon to consumer spending in both hard and soft household goods and that the reopening of our economy will likely have negative effects on the earning potential of emart when compared to pandemic times when everybody was staying home and buying stuff for their homes third i do also recognize the looming threat for retail investors of potential split off ipos for some of their major cash generators namely ssg.com and starbucks now to understand why that's bad news for retail, peep the video in the top right hand corner right now. Finally, while inflation is very likely to affect the sales of consumer cyclicals like electronics or aspects of their Starbucks business, it's important to remember that Emart's bread and butter is consumer non-cyclicals like food, cheap clothing, and other consumer staples. Also, being the big company that they are, they do have a little bit of pricing power and they can adjust their prices to move with inflation a lot more easily than let's say other business to business businesses or business to customer businesses that don't have the same market share the same leverage also if you look at their quick ratio i think right now it's like 0.3 or something it's quite low which just means that their assets cannot or their equity cannot quickly cover their debt but given that their stock price is so low that shouldn't be surprising the stock price being low is not really up for debate because at current their stock is trading at a PER of below 1. Now if you've been watching this channel for some time you'll likely know what a PER is since we've talked about it a lot already. Uh, if you want another really quick rundown click the video in the top right hand corner right now but the PER is really just a ratio that measures how much you're paying for a company when compared to how much money that company is making. So in this case, since the ratio is below one, it means that the company's stock costs less than the actual income that the company is making. And again, I'm not talking about their revenue, I'm not talking about their sales, but their actual earnings. Now, generally the average PER of the KRX 300 or the top 300 companies in our markets is in the mid to high nine times earnings which is actually quite low when compared to US equities, which is around 24, but it's unsurprising considering the historical undervaluing of Korean stocks when compared to the rest of the world. However, all the things considered, it's generally unheard of for a company to cost less than its most recent earnings. Personally, for startups or companies with no clear profit generation, no brand recognition, and low liquidity, I can see why the market may not have faith in them, but in the case of Emart, which is one of the largest brand names in Korea with either managing stakes or full ownership of other well-known brands like Starbucks Korea, Gmarket, SSG.com, or Auction.com, it's really, really, really difficult for me to believe that its stock isn't even worth the real-world, non-speculative, tangible, actual money that the company earned as per their most recent reporting. 
Now, I do realize that we are following two quarters of consecutive losses in their operating profit, but I personally believe that their investments that they made over the course of the pandemic will actually end up paying off. Um, I also don't think, I mean, ultimately the greatest fear is a company going to zero and that just means a company going out of business. And I just simply can't see that happening to eMart even in an inflationary environment like the one we're in. Ultimately, in the case of eMart, I'm continuing to buy on the sheer belief in the numbers. I will happily pay 99 cents for a dollar any day. And I'm happy to hear why this would be wrong from somebody else, but given that I'm in it for the long term and I genuinely believe that the company doesn't even need to grow very fast or very much in the near future to make the current purchase price worth it. Now next is another stock that I want to talk about that I'm continuing to buy, but one that I've also lost a little bit of money on before because the price has dropped in recent months. And the one I'm talking about is Nice DMB. This is another company that I've talked about in the past and one which I'm committed to for reasons entirely different from my commitment to eMart. See, unlike eMart, Nice DNB has a PE ratio of over 10 and it has maintained that PE ratio for the past couple of years and it often trades at a PE much higher than what I usually buy in around like 14, 15, 16. But then why am I interested? Well, higher PEs tend to mean that investors expect growth in the future and I'm one of those investors due to one simple fact about the company it's that they hold a functionally monopolistic position in their industry in Korea, their industry being the business support services industry. Now, the role of Nice DNB is to both store and provide accounting and credit information about companies to interested parties, both locally and abroad. In Korea, they are singular in their corporate credit investigation business, their tech credit bureau business, and ESG evaluation business. Actually, there's a few other ESG evaluation businesses out there, but what they do primarily, which is provide corporate credit information to other companies and other people around the world, is something that the only they do. Now, due to this capture of the market, that also means that they have pricing power that allows them to keep up with the biggest problem that we're all shaking in our boots about right now, and that's inflation. Now, in addition to this advantage, Nice DNB has other traits that I love in a company, such as six years of increases to their operating income in spite of a little dip in their last quarter earnings, consistent and uninterrupted increases to their dividends with a consistent and sustainable payout ratio. It also has an operating profit margin of roughly 20% over the past seven years, and that's beautiful. Now, all of these facts have me absolutely ecstatic that the price of the stock has dropped over 25% since April, putting me in a prime position to keep buying more. Now these two stocks are ones that I'm happy to continue buying in spite of significant losses to their prices, but it should also go without saying that purchasing these stocks is also very much reflective of my personal long-term investment horizon. The money I'm putting into these stocks is money I'm willing to lose in the short term because I don't expect to sell anytime soon, and it helps that both stocks pay a decent enough dividend to hold me over while the market is down. Now, one of the things that actually helps me keep going and investing during inflation is that I just keep buying those onuri sangpungwan and my local gift certificates as well, each of which give me an immediate discount of 5, 7, or 10% depending on when I'm buying it, if there are any events going on. And uh, given that the markets and local food marts that I usually shop at accept both my local and the onuri sangpungwan, and the fact that shitang ajumas usually add about like 200 grams of kimchi or, or fish or onions or whatever I'm looking to buy while I'm there, uh, it's actually been helping me keep up with the rising cost of basic sustenance. All in all, I'm honestly just not really changing much about my investment and saving behaviors because I believe that market cycles are real and that we just happen to be in a downslope of what may be a bit of an extended down cycle. Still, juicing my paychecks for all they're worth with the use of Sangpung Guans and believing in a process that has yet to let me down in the long run is the approach that I'm taking in these hard times. Now, I do realize that it is a luxury for me to be able to keep doing this due to, you know, consistent paychecks and good credit standing and all that stuff. And I also realize that it may not be applicable to most people because I don't know what your finances are like, but if you do have the ability to not sell your holdings and to just keep on keeping on, I do personally believe that trusting history and doing that which history dictates to have been the best option is something that your future self will probably thank you for. All right, that's it for me. This went way longer than I thought it would. Uh, I hope you're doing well. Be easy. I'm going to be back really soon. The thing I'm actually working on right now is a little complicated, so hopefully I'll be able to get it up by the end of the week. I'm not sure. But anyway, see you again. Peace.